Hello and welcome to another historic video. Today we're taking a look at a mono blue affinity deck that tries to leverage the new Kozilex Unsealing, a 3 mana enchantment, saying whenever we cast a creature spell with mana value 4, 5 or 6, we get to make a pair of spawn tokens. Actually, we won't be making those very often. Instead, whenever we cast a creature spell with mana value 7 or greater, we get to draw 3 cards. So that's quite the payoff for casting these various affinity creatures, which we can sometimes cast for just 0 mana if we have enough artifacts on the battlefield, Mirror Enforcer being the original, and then the more recent Frog Mirror Enforcer, which can also maybe be prototyped for 3 in a red, although we're usually more interested in the 7 mana 4-4 four four that we can cast for very cheap. And then we also have the full set of Thought Monitor as another 7 mana artifact with affinity for artifacts, so we can often cast this for just a single blue, and that will also draw 2 cards when it enters the battlefield, so it could draw 5 cards with a Kozilex Unsealing on the battlefield. Of course, a great in multiples as well, as long as we don't risk decking, since it's not optional to draw cards. And then another great payoff in this style of deck is Simulacrum Synthesizer, which lets us scry 2 when it enters, and then whenever another artifact with mana value 3 or greater enters the battlefield under our control, we get to make one of these construct tokens that will get bigger the more artifacts we have on the battlefield, so these can easily get above 10 power. And then we can even give those tokens haste with our Lava Spur Boots to maybe attack right away and present lethal. So that's our game plan in a nutshell. We also get to play with the new Ugin's Labyrinth in our mana base, which has been a great addition, as we can now maybe pitch a Frog Mirror Enforcer or Mirror Enforcer if it's in our opening hand, so this can now tap for 2 mana. So playing a blue source on turn 1 and then Labyrinth on 2 with a card in exile lets us play a turn 2 Synthesizer or maybe Kozilex Unsealing, and then we could already start going off on the following turn, and then later we can still get those cards back in our hand if we're done making extra mana with a Labyrinth. And now we do still need some other cheap artifacts to enable affinity, and we have some of those in the deck with four copies of Ornithopter, which we can play for free. We've got a one off Mox Amber to go with our two copies of Emery, so it can still maybe tap for mana, and then Emery, a way to get back artifacts from our graveyard after milling them. And then we also have some equipment here with our Shadow Spear to help out against the aggro matchups, as we can give our creatures lifelink and trample. And then we mentioned the boots, which is also just a cheap artifact for affinity and something we can tap with Moonsnare Prototype to make a colorless mana. So that can also speed things up. And then later we can still channel the prototype, giving us a bit of interaction. And then besides all these cheap artifacts, we also have a ton of artifacts in our mana base, so we naturally just get a discount on affinity. We've got 12 of these dual lands that produce blue mana, the drawback being they enter the battlefield tapped, but they are also indestructible, so there's not too many ways that opponents can punish us for running these artifact lands, but there are still a couple, thinking of the white march that the opponent can cast for just a single white to exile our land, so that can be quite punishing for a strategy like this, and we'll see some other hate cards that are sometimes played in the main deck throughout the video, so stay tuned for those. So we've got 12 of these blue sources, ideally play these on turn 1 since they enter tapped, and then we can still hopefully cast our blue 3 drops on curve, thanks to some of the untapped lands, Darksteel Citadel, also an artifact land, and then a treasure vault as well got one island, and then of course Ugin's Labyrinth also enters untapped, so that can also help out on turn 3. And then finally we have some more interaction with Ugin's Binding. A 3 mana bound spell is pretty pricey in a format as fast as Historic, but once it's in the graveyard, if we cast a colorless spell with mana value 7 or greater, we can exile the Binding, and then it turns into an overloaded Cyclonic Rift, bouncing all of the opponent's non-land permanents back to hand. So that can be a nice bit of interaction, that can also maybe clear a path for a lethal attack. Now do keep in mind binding only triggers off our enforcers, does not trigger off monitor, which we also cannot pitch to the labyrinth since it specifically calls for a colorless creature, so that's another important distinction. And then we also get to free roll Gigantha as our companion, which is why I'm prioritizing the red and green dual lands here so we can actually cast Gigantha with it. I would like to make room for some cheaper removal, like maybe a portable hole, but if we want to have enough blue sources and artifact lands, I just cannot run enough blue-white dual lands to make that happen consistently. So instead I'm just focusing on having as many artifact lands as possible, which means we're just a mono-blue deck at the end of the day, with maybe red mana for a prototyped enforcer and then the occasional Gigantha. Now you might be wondering why I'm not playing Kappa Cannoneer, another recent addition that seems to fit naturally into an artifact deck like this, as we can keep making artifact tokens to enable the ability. 
but it does have Improvise, which is quite a bit different than Affinity, so we'll still need to tap a bunch of artifacts to cast the Kappa Cannoneer, and if we're not already going off with a Synthesizer, it's going to be pretty expensive to get it down, so I decided uh, to go with some cheaper enablers instead of playing more kind of clunky payoffs that we may not get on the battlefield in time. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and... We don't have the most exciting hand. Labyrinth doesn't have a colorless creature to exile to it. And we're missing some of our three mana payoffs. So, yeah, I think I mulligan this is better. And then probably ditch the boots. Next turn we can play a tap land and still play Emery to still guarantee our three drops on curve. Opponent on Esper. And Emery down. Otherwise, might have been able to get back an Enforcer later. Alright, so hopefully this resolves. And I think Synthesizer is a more important one for starters. Since we also get to scry. And look for some of our creatures. And Narset, that one's a problem. Since it can prevent us from going off with the Unsealing. We need to find a way to pressure it. I think I still play the Unsealing, though. It's not like Gigantha is going to come down next turn. And a prototype that can maybe be channeled to get rid of Narset. So I'm going to hang on to it. Put on draws. Shadow Spear is the draw. Okay. So could also just cast a Gigantha for now. Probably gets removed, but so be it. We'll still get some spawn tokens. And then we don't really need to answer Narset until we're ready to draw cards. And now I can also maybe suit up a spawn with Shadow Spear to finish off Narset instead. So getting value out of our companions, nice. And there's a Thought Monitor. So yeah, I think the plan is Shadow Spear... Equip a spawn, send both at Narset. And hope we can finish it off. Cut down one of them. And march for five. Okay. That happens. And then we'll just suit up our other spawn. And then we'll see if next turn we can finish off Narset or if we need to channel prototype. Well, that answers that question. Piece it together. Puns. Gonna try to maybe take an extra turn eventually. And a backup Narset. We don't really mind since we were gonna channel anyways. So this is our chance to combo off. Sudden Edict is fine. And then I guess we'll use a Labyrinth here. And goodbye Narset. This cannot be countered by your typical counter spells since it's a channel ability. And now we get to go off and draw. So we're off to the races.
So then edict me. And we're gonna draw while we can. Might want to hold something back in case of a board wipe. Have another synthesizer as well. So this should be plenty. Can hold the ornithopters or play them. Since we'll have to discard to hand size a bunch. Can also discard the uh, Ugin's Binding. So that when we cast a 7 drop next turn. We get to bounce Narset as well. So something along these lines seems fine. There's Narset. I know I have just the trick for this. And the Shieldred's Edict is not going to be good enough and our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a uh, fine hand. Can pitch the Enforcer to Ugin's Labyrinth if needed. Although for now, play a Tamped Bridge, and then next turn we can play Emery. Let's see what we're up against. A Lair into Elvish Mystic, maybe Elves, and the Unsealing was a great draw. So I could cast that now already. Although I'm still kind of liking Prototype plus Emery, since that still develops her mana. And then next turn Emery can maybe get something back. Okay, Synthesizer especially could be good. So we've got both Synthesizer and Unsealing available. And then it's just a matter of having enough artifacts on the battlefield. One might be on green devotion. Two mana left for Utopia Sprawl. So, what is our plan? Can just go for Synthesizer. And then, I guess if I pitch the Enforcer, we can still do something else. Yeah, that seems like a fine starting point. So play Synthesizer. And then we probably don't mind drawing another free artifact. Could make it Ornithopter, I suppose, since we probably draw another land for turn. And then I can still play the boots and equip Emery. And then next turn... I can play Ornithopter, this costs 2 mana, and then I can still go and Sealing into Thought Monitor and take it from there. Also have one in the Graveyards, Frog Mirror and Forcer we might be able to play for free. And that's a pretty disappointing Storm to the Festival for the opponent. So let us play the Unsealing, Ornithopter. And then, yeah, let's maybe go with Thought Monitor. And then now I can pretty easily play this Enforcer for free. And draw three more. And then I'll have to wait to deploy more stuff out. And that's good enough for a concession. All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And what do we think of this hand? Can cast a binding and then maybe get it back out of the graveyard. Yeah, we can give it a shot. Still hoping to find some of our other three drops. Facing a life gain deck, okay. So at least Ugin's Binding can be a nice reset button. I 
and then hopefully we can just go over the top once we find some of our other synergies. And I guess I might have wanted to play Ornithopter just to block Speaker of the Heavens. And there's Mirror Enforcer, okay. So, probably a good turn for Ugin's Binding. Opponent playing the Glass Pool Mimic version. And we'll bounce Bishop so they can gain life right away. Still hoping for a Synthesizer. Thought Monitor is not bad either. And there's Synthesizer, perfect. So, for now I think just equip, and then next turn I'll be able to play Synthesizer and essentially empty my hand, make a ton of Constructs, and then bounce the opponent's stuff back as well. Opponent up to 25. They couldn't attack, and we found the Unsealing too. Awesome, so... Play Labyrinth, pitching Enforcer, and then we can cast both three mana cards here. Scry at this point looking for more seven drops. And then we can go off with Ugin's Binding. And then next turn we can also give our Constructs haste with the boots. So they'll need a pretty powerful collected company to try and stabilize, but I don't really see it happening. Soul Warden, I guess pretty good when we have a Synthesizer going off. And Valkyrie. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, they're just too far behind, and we would be able to easily attack for lethal here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got our synthesizer, some payoffs. So, yeah, sign me up. Next turn, play prototype, play boots. And then we're not too far from synthesizer into some more expensive artifacts, although we are up against Blue-Red Wizards, which is probably one of our worst matchups, since it's an aggressive deck with flying creatures that has burn spells to finish us off, but also more importantly, Flame of Anor, which can destroy our artifacts for three mana. So we really need to be able to play Synthesizer and generate a bunch of constructs in the same turn, ideally. And if I play Synthesizer, I'll still be one mana short of playing Enforcer or Thought Monitor. So I think we just wait and then hope they tap out for something else. Could still play Thought Monitor just to draw a few cards. And then next turn Synthesizer into Enforcer. Can still at least make one Construct. Yeah, maybe that makes more sense in case they have Artifact Removal. If they blow a Prototype, they could slow us down as well. And then we can suit up the Monitor. Alright, and then next turn, Synthesizer into Enforcer at least makes one large construct. So opponent looking at the boots, so they probably have Flame of Anor. Yep. Okay, well, hopefully they don't have more of those. But it's probably a 4-off in the wizard deck. Opponent also seems to have misclicked and targeted the same Sage twice, so they missed out on 3 damage. Okay, Emery could also come in handy, although probably won't survive. So right now we can play Synthesizer. And then if I play Bridge, we can play a free Enforcer. And then I can still play... 
machinery as well. Don't really want to mill the bridges. So play Emery. Alright, we mill some more 7 drops. And then uh, bridge into Enforcer. Can maybe channel prototype next turn. And get a 9-9 construct. So we'll see if they have another flame for synthesizer or maybe the construct token. They could destroy Emery and destroy my synthesizer. And it looks like they have another one. Yep, going for the construct, so at least we still have synthesizer left. But with no other ways to trigger it, it's not super relevant. And a Swiss spear. Take six. And boots to draw. So we can play the boots and then suit up maybe Thought Monitor to hold off Symmetry Sage. Or I can just channel prototype. But yeah, at this point we just need to string together more expensive spells to trigger Synthesizer. Gigantha in hand probably doesn't do a whole lot for me. But it's also an option. Yeah, Symmetry Sage being kind of a two-tron clock here is what scares me. So we can still play the boots and have enough mana for a channel prototype, but I can't equip. And then Enforcers holding off Swiss Spear, but not sure for how long. Iteration can draw. Gonna wait for the opponent to move to attackers since they probably have reckless charge to give creatures haste. So if we bounce something now, they can still replay it and attack. But our opponent still has plenty of cards in hand, and we're kind of on empty here. Another thought monitor off the top would be ideal. But yeah, double flame of honor is gonna be rough in a matchup like this. Opponent bouncing mirror enforcer, so they're maybe trying to go for lethal. That's fine. That maybe gives us a way to trigger synthesizer for next turn if we survive. So I can chum block probably the Swiss spear and then still channel prototype to bounce sage. And another Enforcer, that was a perfect draw. Gigantha in hand. Equip the boots. And all of a sudden we're the aggressor in the matchup. Hitting them for 12. Can still move the boots back. But we could still die to a bunch of flyers. And looks like they have the reckless charge. And that'll do it. Well, our opponent lost out on three damage earlier in the game. Which also could have made the difference. But uh, yeah, maybe had I, I guess, bounced the Swiss Spear last turn. And then maybe still had Thought Monitor to chump here. Not sure that would have made a difference. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got Synthesizer, only one land, but a prototype as well. So, this one has potential if we can hit our land drops. So I'll try. Opponents playing with Lurus. And Kumano, so it's a burn deck. Citadel was a good draw. So next turn we can play a prototype, play the boots. I see a Jani. With additional red permanence means the transform the Jani is even scarier. Would have felt pretty comfortable on the play, on the draw. Possible our opponent can burn us out before we stabilize. 
And yeah, the new Amped Raptor, also a great addition for a deck where all spells cost two or less mana. As you just get a free spell in addition to a 2 1 first strike. Or a 12. So, what's our plan? If I play Synthesizer, I can still play something afterwards, which is probably the way to go. And then. Don't have a ton of blue mana for Thought Monitor. Do we want Treasure Vault? Not particularly. So probably bottom both. Looking for more seven mana artifacts that I can play without blue mana. So at least we'll get a Construct here, and then now I could still play the Enforcer as well. Even though we're gonna miss out on the Unsealing value. I'm more worried about stabilizing. So not a bad turn three. Opponent passes, find Mox Amber. So I think for now we'll just go with the unsealing. Unless we want to start turning the team sideways. There's a chance Thought Monitor draws into an untapped blue source, but we don't have a lot of those. So maybe that's still worthwhile. And then I can give a Construct Haste, attack with a bunch of them. And the Labyrinth doesn't do much for me here. We'll just play our artifacts to grow our constructs. And yeah, we could also give Thought Monitor haste. And go aggro. Opponent's probably happy to block with the Cat Warrior to transform a Jani. This has them taking 11. At least if they're chumping here, the Jani zero ability is not going to be quite as devastating. So their opponent reconsiders. They maybe did the math and with a burn spell they can finish off the Enforcer. Nope. So our opponent dies instead. Bit of a weird choice, but okay, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Zerda, so a creature combo deck most likely. We'll uh, definitely mulligan that hand. This I can try. And Enforcer can go. So we'll have three artifact lands, synthesizer, so four artifacts, and then on the following turn we can maybe start casting our seven drops. I see Strike It Rich, so this is a Charbelcher combo deck. And yeah, if they have a particularly powerful opening hand, they could already win on turn three with an Iron Crag feat, play Charbelcher Activate. And then the Charbelcher deck, of course, picked up a lot of new lands from Modern Horizons 3 to incorporate in their mana base. So the deck is better than ever before. Our opponent doesn't have the most explosive start, but they could just win next turn. Now Ugin's Labyrinth means I could play Synthesizer, have a leftover mana, but that doesn't really accomplish much, so... I'll just play Synthesizer... And then the unsealing would be great. So I can keep that one on top. Let's see for dead. Another strike it rich, so we do get at least one more turn. So definitely want to play the unsealing. Can pitch one card to the labyrinth, or I can keep both to try and uh, draw more cards with the Unsealing. If I go Unsealing, Ornithopter, Land. Problem is, these will still cost one mana. So I don't quite have enough to discount them down to zero. Of course, the second one I play, we can discount, but if I don't draw into something, then uh, it's going to be exiled underneath Labyrinth, so we may not be able to go off all the way. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, give Labyrinth a try. Of 
Probably should have sequenced so that we play Ornithopter last, so they don't have a chance to take it out with a burn spell and maybe uh, fizzle out my turn. And those were not the draws we were hoping for. Can hang on to another Ornithopter. Alright, so we'll probably die here, but next turn we would have been able to get back Enforcer, cast it, draw more cards, make more constructs, maybe find the boots to give a construct haste and still present lethal. But yeah, there's the Iron Crank feat for Charbelcher. Or maybe they have creativity to get Charbelcher, but that should still work. Yeah. And they have enough floating mana here to Charbelcher for lethal. So yeah, this seems like a tough matchup since our opponent's just going to be a turn or two faster than us since we don't really have a way to interact. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is missing some of our three mana payoffs. But Thought Monitor is one of the better ones to still have. Yeah, I'll try it. Up against Wizards, so not our favorite matchup. For now... We'll just pass, hang on to Ornithopter until we can play them out and Thought Monitor in the same turn. And Arcanist also quite scary if they can cast cheap spells. So, just gonna play the boots. And then the next turn we can deploy Thought Monitor. Ancestral Anger. Symmetry Stage also very nice with Arcanist since it allows them to get back more expensive spells as well. And another artifact land. I guess we can play that out as well. And then let's maybe go double Ornithopter into Thought Monitor. Before we decide what to do next. Okay, found a couple Enforcers we can deploy. Opponent holding a burn spell here, thinking what they want to do with it. And then we can equip the boots. Question is whether we attack or play defense. If they have a Flame of Anor next turn, they could take out a Mirror Enforcer on defense and attack. So that's a reason to maybe keep the boots on defense. Opponent with a wizard sliding on the Thought Monitor. Yeah, I think the Forcer has to hang back. Otherwise we get destroyed by a Flame. Now I guess Flame can still take out the Boots first, and then pump up Arcanist, attack, and then get back Flame. Which can both take out Enforcer and deal 5 damage to the other one. So I guess if they have Flame we're still in trouble here. There's no way around it. And our opponent's on the Burn Plane. So Ornithopter probably wants to chump. We will get to eat the Arcanist at least. So don't love my spot given a pretty weak hand here. But uh, yeah, I guess we could have been in a bit more trouble on the board. So now we can send in the Enforcer. And then we might want to hang on to Prototype so we can channel it. And then for now play the Boots. Maybe put Gigantha in hand as opposed to move the Boots around. And Ornithopter can chump again if needed. I suppose had I played Prototype, then I could have still tapped Ornithopter for mana. And then I might have had the mana to next turn play Gigantha and give it haste to maybe speed up our clock slightly. Thought Monitor was excellent, so we'll start there. Find another one, alright, so 
that's how we can maybe get there. Opponent stuck on two lanes as well, so possible they have flame in hand, but just unable to cast it. So let's Thumb Monitor again. And then more Ornithopters that can trump. Thought monitor to the rescue. And then we can move a boots here. Time for flame. Maybe a reason to keep the boots on the mirror enforcer as opposed to the tapped thought monitor. Because now they could deal five damage to the enforcer and destroy an artifact. Yep. Put on drawing instead. So we can bounce Symmetry Sage, but it seems better to play Gigantha and give it haste. Because then they'll have to chum block. So our opponent chumps takes five. And we still have an Ornithopter on defense, so I'm cautiously optimistic. Could still maybe die to a flurry of burn spells if they have more static discharges. We had a pretty scrappy hand, never finding our unsealing or synthesizer. And yeah, there's another flame. Pay the ward. Giganta down. But uh, yeah, could still play Enforcer and give it haste. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We're missing one of our three mana payoffs. But we have some decent seven drops in hand, including a Thought Monitor, which can maybe draw. And then plenty of artifact lands to discount our spells as well. Opponent might be on a similar deck. Playing Springleaf Drum, also a consideration. Although it looks like they're more low to the ground with more creatures, in which case Springleaf Drum makes more sense. Since we only really have Ornithopter as a cheap creature to enable it. So it looks like they're the black-red variety. Playing Cranial Ram, no doubt. And a familiar makes me discard. And uh, can probably ditch a one artifact land. And we'll play Ornithopter as a blocker here. And then hopefully next turn we can unload most of our spells. And a Frogmare Enforcer is their last one. Okay, this is beatable at the moment. If they find a Cranial Ram, we could still be in trouble. And an Ugin's Labyrinth. At this point, I'm probably fine just playing the Citadel, which contributes more towards affinity. Play Monitor, and then we can play one mana Enforcer, and then a free Enforcer afterwards if we want to. Ooh, nice Synthesizer. So now I'm probably going to wait for those. Can suit up one of my creatures. And we'll make it... What makes the most sense? Probably just Ornithopter having a point of power. And then I'll take probably six damage next turn at least. But then next turn I can play Synthesizer and make two constructs at least. Opponent sacks their clue. They can also activate the uh, Fomori Vault if they want to. So that's what they're looking into. Pretty powerful activated ability as a mana sink, although it is quite pricey. So that can likely find them a cranial ram. And take four. Okay, so play a synthesizer. 
not gonna pitch to a Labyrinth. And we'll keep blue mana available. Scry Finding Thought Monitor, definitely keep that one. Probably don't need an extra pair of boots. And then I think we just uh, play them both out. Next turn we'll play another Synthesizer into Thought Monitor, making even more Constructs. And we can maybe attack with one of them right now. Ornithopter could trump. Now I guess if we're worried about Cranial Ram on Ginger Brutes, we can also keep a creature with boots on defense. So that we have haste and can actually block the Ginger Brute. Opponent just with a Terramander. That one's manageable. So yeah, we should be in the driver's seat now. Opponent adapts. And Ginger Brute gets in for one. Happy to trade for a familiar. And then Synthesizer first, leaving blue mana available. Don't trust Auto Tapper. Can set up our draw step. And I uh, don't think we need either of these. Although I guess an untapped land lets me play Monitor and still maybe move around the boots, but our opponent has seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand would be great if we actually had blue mana. As is, I can't cast any of my spells. Although it really just takes one blue source, and we have a lot of those. And then we have both Synthesizer and Unsealing. So this one's definitely sketchy, but I think the payoff is worth it. So I'm gonna take a bit of a risk. Ideally we find it in our first draw step, so we can play it tapped. And there we have it. Okay, so next turn with the Labyrinth we could already play a Synthesizer. And we seem to be up against Blue-Red Wizards. So we do need a particularly explosive opening to stand a chance. Turn to Arcanist. Now I guess our opponent playing Flame of Honor is a reason to play Unsealing before Synthesizer. Whereas normally I would recommend Synthesizer first. So we'll give that a try. So they don't have any artifacts they can destroy since this is indestructible. And Balmor can also add up. So our opponent gets to draw some cards, deal 3 damage basically. But next turn is gonna hurt. Mirror Enforcer could be a good draw. So play my Artifact Land. If I play Ornithopter, play a Synthesizer. This will still cost 3 mana. So maybe we just play a Thought Monitor for now, which still triggers Koselex Unsealing. And then um, we don't really mind if they destroy this with a Flame. And an Untapped Blue Source could also come in handy. So I have to discard two hand size, either a synthesizer or a pair of boots can go. Make it the boots. And then uh, hopefully they don't take out too many of my artifacts and next turn we can unload. So I don't really mind our opponent drawing more cards as opposed to dealing more damage. Arcanist can get back iteration. And we'll take six. And they will be able to play a Symmetry Sage, so that's still scary. Okay, so what's our sequencing gonna be like? Probably play a Synthesizer. Step one. And then I'll keep the Enforcer. 
So yeah, I think we go with Boots and then Islands, Thought Monitor, Free Enforcer. As much as I want to get an extra blue source for next turn, we have to focus on the here and now. So Unsealing Triggers, Synthesizer Triggers. Got a couple flying blockers, but our opponent can still deal some trample damage in the air. So we could still easily die next turn despite going off. So finding more Ornithopters is nice. But we're definitely presenting lethal next turn. Can even discard Ugin's Binding to hand size and then the next turn maybe enable it. Okay, not a bad turn. Gotta keep all flyers on defense. And then seven cards to keep instead of discarding since we have so many. Keep synthesizers, boots, prototype, and maybe an extra artifact land. I guess one more. Okay. So are we dead? If our opponent found a second red source earlier, we probably would have died sooner. But yeah, still a wizard's lightning, which they can get back with Arcanist. Just have to block as much as possible. Something along these lines. That works. So we're still at 5. We get to untap and we get to smash for a ton of damage. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got our synthesizer. Yeah, it's a bit of a, an expensive curve, but Thought Monitor is our best payoff, so probably worth it. Prismatic Vista, also legal and historic. So that's definitely one of the better lanes now. And sadly, Thoughtseize can now take Synthesizer. And uh, that's going to punch a pretty big hole in our plan. Haven't faced too much hand disruption so far, so it was bound to happen. But uh, Thought Monitor is still a nice way to recover from a discard spell. Just need some cheap artifacts now to actually enable them. As we see another Thoughtseize. No shortage of blue mana, so... Still happy with triple Thought Monitor, even though we can't cast it for free if we have kind of maximum affinity. Play Bridge, and then next turn we can play Monitor. And now I can play the Boots first, too. So yeah, against a more controlling deck, this is a pretty good draw to have. We'll eventually find another Synthesizer or Unsealing. And then we're off to the races. Unless our opponents maybe a combo deck that can set up a lethal out of nowhere. If they're just going to try to one-for-one one me with removal spells, we'll have that late-game inevitability. Alright, Karn shutting down my artifacts. That's uh, a problem. So now my lands don't stamp for mana anymore. And uh, yeah, that's a problem, so can't click on my bridges anymore. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can still cast Thought Monitor to try and pressure Karn. So that's my best hope now. Yeah, we spoke too soon. Karn the Great Creator is uh, quite backbreaking for our deck. Mirror Enforcer the draw. Okay, so now with Ugin's Labyrinth we have another land that can actually make mana. Karn can keep plussing to destroy my lands turn after turn. But now I'm looking at Labyrinth pitching Enforcer. Can just play the Unsealing. And then next turn we can start drawing. Yeah, maybe that's still better. Since it doesn't run into a removal spell here. 
They will be able to make my Thought Monitor more expensive by taking out an artifact. But yeah, if we can actually beat Karn, that would be amazing. Grave Expectations, heisting a card from our deck. Should be fine. They can maybe find a Flying Blocker for Thought Monitor. So yeah, Karn's quite brutal against us. A great way to punish artifact lanes. So if this deck ever becomes too popular, just main deck Karn and you should be fine. Cards like the White March are also excellent at dealing with artifact lanes, since you can exile them. And then Indestructible doesn't matter. But uh, let's see what we can come up with. A draw three cards here. Okay. And then play Enforcer. I guess we can't equip the boots, never mind, because of course Karn shuts down the haste ability as well. So go for Enforcer. Possible our opponents got a board wipe, so I might not want to overextend too much. But I also want to have enough threats to actually attack Karn next turn. Yeah, I guess this is enough for now. And then I can maybe discard the binding to hand size. So next turn I can cast it for free. Okay, so the game goes on. So now even if they do have a board wipe, we can still at least bounce Karn with the Ugin's binding. Assuming they don't have graveyard hate, which I guess Karn can find as well. Maybe should have kept it in hand just to bounce Karn for three mana. Thought Seize has a look. Can take an Enforcer maybe, if they have another discard spell to take both. And a Language, so they did actually have the Sweeper. Does Karn get Graveyard Hate? Nope, just gonna plus on my land. Okay, so we have a window to make something happen now, thanks to Ugin's Binding. So, step one, discount my artifacts. Then we can... Cast Enforcer, probably fine to play a Treasure Vault out. That triggers. And then we would love to find another Synthesizer. For now I guess play another Unsealing. And draw six cards. And there's a Synthesizer, so we can get that down. Amory essentially pays for itself with Mox Amber, so we can play that as well. Have to keep an eye on cards and library. So Mox Amber makes blue. I can give Amory haste to get back something from the graveyard, such as another Synthesizer, although I won't be able to cast it right now. So maybe I'll just uh, and get back a Thought Monitor or another Enforcer. Since that'll draw six. Now this isn't optional, so I wouldn't be able to cast too many more spells. Which is why the uh, Synthesizer is actually an important win condition. So now we can give one of those creatures haste. Probably play Prototype. Because the yeah, next turn our artifacts are going to be shut down again. Make some mana. Can play another boots. And hit for five. And then definitely don't need more unsealings. I do want a synthesizer. I'll keep the labyrinths, which can make mana through Karn. This seems okay. All right, let's see if they have another sweeper. They're just going to replay the ring. So 
So this is a window for synthesizer, which doesn't trigger the unsealing. Okay, and then I can maybe equip Shadow Spear while I'm here. Thanks to the prototype. And that way Enforcer doesn't die to another Languish. Yeah, if it weren't for the ring, of course, we could have easily attacked for lethal. Just gonna pass it back. Edict, sack my token, but can make more next turn. Opponent can, of course, replay Karn. Triple Stronghold, not doing them too many favors. Since they can't make too much extra mana with it yet. There's Karn. Can maybe minus get another ring. But then we can still take out Karn at least. Gets a worm coil, that's not gonna cut it. So our opponent's in desperation mode. And our opponent explodes. Wow, we actually beat Karn, the great creator. And uh, yeah, thanks to Ugin's Labyrinth mostly, being a land that can still tap for mana. And we get to rank up to Platinum as a reward. So yeah, this version of Affinity is incredibly impressive once it gets the ball rolling with Synthesizer and Kozilek's Unsealing. Without one of those cards, the deck doesn't really do much, outside of maybe Thought Monitor still drawing us extra cards, so you do need to mulligan accordingly. And then yeah, hope you don't face one of those dedicated artifact hate cards like Karn, since there are certainly answers out there if the deck ever becomes too popular. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.